Well, hey gang, it's Miles here, and it's time for another House Plan of the Week. This is episode 11, and if you're new to my channel, which is Paradise in a Pot, make sure you go ahead and subscribe before we get started. I'll wait. It's okay. Go ahead. All right, great. And at the end of the video, if you've learned a little something from this, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Sure appreciate it. And if you're not new here, welcome back. Thank you so much for rejoining me today. I sure appreciate everybody coming here. I'm so grateful for everyone here. I really have a lot of fun with this. Uh, I just want to say real quick, last night I had a premiere of a little shopping tour I did at Star Nursery, which actually kind of inspired this week's House Plant of the Week. And I uh, actually talked to two other plant tubers in a chat on my premiere, which was so much fun, so enjoyable. Actually, uh, I don't know, it just brought me so much joy. And that was uh, Jacqueline's Jungle and uh, Janae, and both their channels. I'm going to put a link down in the comments bottom of the video here and underneath that I want you to comment if you watch those guys because if you don't watch them make sure you go subscribe to them they're both two amazing youtubers uh, they're really different in styles but I like both their styles um, Janae is really chill really kind of got the vibe going you really enjoy you know every little task and chore she does and she's got the fish tank in the background which if you all been here for a while you know I used to have a fish tank and that will probably get one again in the future but right now we're in between waiting to see how the fish store situation goes, but that's another video. Anyhow, this week's plant of the week is going to be Podophyllum, and that's the Syngonium Podophyllum, which to me is one of the most, I think, uh, diverse house plants that we see in the market as far as the varieties and colors used. The Podophyllum is a plant from uh, Central America, from Mexico down to Bolivia, and in nature, it has either two growing habits, both of them climb. But one might like it a little darker, a little more in jungle, in shade. And you can always tell those because their leaves are going to be darker. So the darker leaf podophyllums need less light, where the brighter leaves and the leaves with the colors and the strange uh, variegations that we want, those need a brighter light, not direct sunlight. Don't give them direct sunlight. Uh, in nature, if they find their way to the sunlight, that's one thing. But in our homes, I don't think you want to really go through all that process with them. But they are so diverse. They are actually, they're kind of like the dogs of the houseplant world, you know, where you can have a chihuahua to a great name and anything in between with colors and varieties and shapes and sizes. But at the end of the day, they're all still dogs. Well, these syncodium putophyllums, at the end of the day, uh, if they were to flower, if you had two varieties flower, you could cross pollinate them and maybe even come up with seeds of a new variety. And I'm sure that's exactly what's being done right now. And because of their Kind of what they call plastic dna it's really easy to pick out and manipulate whatever colors you're looking for whether it's the reds the pinks the browns the whites now the yellows you can pick those out and then try to breed for those to really intensify and get a stable uh, variety of that and then once they get it stable they put it on the market and i love it it's i think one of the house plants i have the most of in my home and i've actually considered taking multiples of smaller potted uh, syngoniums and putting them together into a bigger pot just to have like a multi-array of syngoniums and to have a less less plants to take care of because I have, I haven't counted, just looking right here I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I see seven right here within my small little living room and I'm sure I've got a couple more. Oh, seven, eight, I forgot about this, I have uh, the mojito now. So I have eight just surrounding me right here and I'm sure if I go into the other room there's probably a lot more. So they are, I think, a plant that I have the most of. If I were to put them all together, I would say I've got more Syngonium than anything. Even though I've got that giant Monstera, I think the Syngonium still might outweigh it. So moving right along here, um, I'm going to put a variety of photos of just some of the varieties of Syngoniums that I have in my home that I'm talking about right now because I'm not going to spin the camera around. But you can take a look and see how different and unique all these varieties are. You have the Maria, the Pink Illusion, the Berry Illusion. Um, let's see, I got, yeah, this is a Pink Illusion. I picked up that Dwarf Queen yesterday, which is really so cute. So they have dwarfs, like I said, you know, from Chihuahua to Great Dane, you get the dwarfs, and then you got the bigger ones. And so I'm just gonna put up a bunch of photos, just kind of show you all the Syngoniums I have here in my home. And um, yeah, even I can think of in the other room, there's the Go Glow. It's just, it's amazing how many varieties there are. So 
that makes them a lot of fun. Now on a Syngonium, when you water it, you want to probably let the top two inches of soil go dry. Stick your finger in the dirt to check it. Or you can actually, with these guys, if you see your Syngonium every day, you can kind of let it droop a little bit to let you know it's thirsty. And it's very forgiving. It'll pop right back up. And that's sometimes the best way to water it. I don't like to do that too often with mine, though. I always just usually pick up the pot if the pot feels real light. Then it's time to water them. And that said, I do use plastic pots for all my Syngoniums. They do like uh, to hold on to their water a little bit longer than a lot of plants. I do still use Airy Aeroid Mix when I pot them up so that they drain quickly. Key important when watering them, you want to soak them. You want the water to come out of the holes. If you put water into your Syngonium and you see bubbles coming up out of the dirt, that means your plant's probably too dry and you should really just give it a good soak, maybe put it in the sink for a good half hour and maybe put it in a little saucer of water so that, because sometimes that peak is a little hydrophobic, so it's hard to reabsorb water. But if you set it there for half an hour and the roots are still established, you can get in there and kind of fill in those air bubbles. You get too much of that dry spot in there, that can cause a root rot over time because the dry roots may get flooded with water and then rot because they're not used to it. So you want to try to keep the soil evenly moistened. And that's why I say just take it to the sink, wash the water through it, rinse it really well. And then what I'll do is after I've watered a Syngonium thoroughly, I'll then lightly feed it with, I use my Liquid Karma, and then they also get sprayed down every season with the Amazing Kelp. So they don't require a lot of feeding, but they do respond to it. These plants do like to climb. They are a climbing vine. And the inner nodes on them are usually really close together because they try to, I think, keep them bushier uh, for retail sales. But eventually, that plant's going to vine. It's going to spill over its pot. If you've got it in a hanging basket, it can look really amazing hanging down. However, this plant, it wants to go up. It wants to climb. And if you climb it up a pole or a totem or a wall or whatever you want to climb them up, a tree if you're in Florida, which you'll get to, you, you want to you wanna do this because you're going to see that as it gets you know, going up, just like most aeroids, the leaf is going to start to morph and change. And you're going to go from that one lobe that looks kind of like a goose foot to three lobes, which now looks like a bunny. And then you go to five, and it goes in odd numbers. And, well, usually in odd numbers. I'm not going to say that is the rule, but it's usually in odd numbers. And the full mature leaf of the Syngonium, and I'll put up a photo over here somewhere, um, is really a lot different than the Syngoniums that we have in our homes, that we see in the stores. Because a lot of people don't know that, you know, anything up will change its leaf morph. So that said, now with Syngoniums, I don't find I have any pest pressures so far, knock on wood. But I do, just to be sure, um, I do put systemic poison in all of my, all my plants really right now. Because I don't like fungus gnats, thrips, uh, or any other parasites that come in and attack my plants. So it's just out of uh, abundance of caution I do that. Um, and, and I don't have any problems with the plants. They all seem to be doing really well. This plant is toxic. It is very poisonous. It is not pet safe. It has little, um, almost like glass-like shards at a microscopic level, along with some acidic poisons that can really be painful. Like if you were to bite into a syngonium leaf or a stem or a root, because the whole plant's got it, so there's nothing safe anywhere. It would almost be painful like you're eating broken glass, but it's like at a microscopic level, so it's just like really a little... You don't want to do it. I've never done it, but from everything I've read about it, it doesn't sound very pleasant. Um, also, if you handle a lot of Syngoniums, you might want to wear gloves, because just even the handling of them, they send this poison off as a defense mechanism. So if you're moving them around a lot, they probably think they're in jeopardy, so they probably send it off. So you want to be careful uh, when propagating, maybe use gloves to propagate this plant. And real quick, the propagation on a Syngonium is so easy. All you have to do is chop off, have a couple nodes, a couple leaves, put it in water, and it will root up. And I will show you uh, over here some of the Syngoniums that I have rooted up in water that are ready to go. I'm actually waiting for my temperatures to cool down so that I can ship a few out. Syngonium podophyllum can be extremely invasive if you live in Florida or Texas or the West Indies. So just make sure that if you're in a semi-tropical area or one of those places in the United States, you're not letting this out in your garden grow up a tree because it can become invasive and take over other species that are native to the area. Now, with this Sycodium podophyllum, I'm going to go a little bit into some of the more fun of it. And I'm going to show you, first of all, the flower of the, the Syngonium. And if you have two Syngonium podophyllums, like I had mentioned, and they both flower at the same time, you can cross-pollinate them. 
Now the seeds you get from those, if you get them to grow, and it's a lot more processed than what I'm saying here, and I've never personally done this, so please don't take this as gospel. I had just read a few articles about what's done with these, but if you could get a propagation to flower uh, and cross, and you create a new seed, you could potentially uh, name a new variety for yourself. So if it's something you're really interested in and you like to cross plants or you like to play with genetics with plants, this is a fun one to play with. There are so many new and upcoming syngodiums to the market that I'm seeing in uh, a lot of the videos that I watch out of Thailand and Malaysia. And I find it really fascinating how they get these pink blotches with these white blotches and dark green and a light green. And, and they got this one called Lava I've seen, and it just almost looks like red veinage coming out to a dark green leaf. And it's just so amazing, really, what they're doing with the uh, podophyllums because of how easily it is to manipulate. So definitely something to look into if it's something you think you might enjoy. Actually, bring this out so you can see it. So this is the podophyllum uh, moonshine. You can see it's given me some really neat variegation. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not. And this is from the, I cut this off. So I cut it up here, and uh, I propagated this bit into water. So this is the top half, and then I just planted it right back in there. So it's, it's I'm just going to fill this up. I have one more piece that's rooting. But uh, yeah, this is Syngonium Moonshine, and this was given to me by a friend of mine, uh, Christina. But wow, I didn't even notice this leaf. This is kind of interesting. I wonder where that's going. Did I break out a new variegation? Who can say? Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and put this one down. And I think we're going to go ahead and wrap our video up there. So I want to thank you all for joining me today for House Plant of the Week number 11, Spence and Godium Podophyllum. Please let me know in the comments below if you have this plant, what you think of it, and what varieties you have. I'd love to know. Thanks much, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!